this video, I'm going to show you how to solve five dilution and concentration calculation questions, and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa, and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So the questions in this video are from our NAPLES Calculations Question Bank. This question bank is the largest pharmaceutical calculations question bank on the planet. Now, if you'd like to check it out, I'm going to put a link to it in the description. Also, if you'd like to expand your understanding of dilution and concentration calculations, we have so many videos on the channel, and I'm going to put a link to a playlist in the description as well. So let's get right to it. This question says, how much drug should be used in preparing 100 milliliters of a solution such that 10 milliliters diluted to 1500 milliliters will yield a 1 is to 2000 solution round to the nearest tenth do not include units so in this question the goal is to determine the quantity of a drug and we will keep the units in grams here so that when you prepare 100 milliliters of the solution and you take out 10 milliliters to dilute to 1500 milliliters, the concentration in the solution will be 1 to 2000. So I'm going to start off by showing you a physical representation of what's actually going on in the question. You have 100 milliliters of a solution. So this will be your 100 milliliter solution. And you want to find out how much drug to put in here so that when you take out 10 milliliters, so this is 10 milliliters, and you make a larger mixture, which is 1500 milliliters, the resultant concentration here will be 1 is to 2000. So this has a volume of 100 milliliters. So you make a 100 milliliter solution using a certain amount of drug, take out 10 ml from there, and then make a larger mixture, which is 1500 milliliters, and then your final concentration in that solution is 1 is to 2000. And so the strategy that we are going to use is we are first going to determine how much drug is actually in the 1500 milliliter solution. So that's the first thing we want to do. And so for step one, we're going to start off by determining the amount of drug in the 1500 milliliter solution. Now, the way we do that is to make use of the volume and then the concentration. So the concentration is 1 is to 2000, which implies that we have one gram of drug in 2000 milliliters of solution. What we have here is a 1500 milliliter solution. So we multiply this by 1500 milliliters. The milliliters cancels out. And now that's going to be equal to 0 0.75 grams. So now that we've determined this, we know that we have 0 0.75 grams of drug in this 1500 milliliter solution. But notice that all of this 0 0.75 grams of drug came from the 10 milliliter volume that we took from the original 100 milliliter solution. So what we know is this 0 0.75 grams is in the 10 milliliters. So we can set up a quick proportion to determine how much will be in 100 milliliters. And so the next step here will be to determine the amount of drug that is in the 100 milliliter solution. And so the way we are going to do that is to state that 0 0.75 grams of drug is present in the 10 milliliter volume. How much drug in grams will be present in the 100 milliliter solution? So we can now go ahead and solve for the unknown, which is x here. So x is going to be equal to 0 0.75 grams times 100 milliliters divided by 10 milliliters. The milliliters cancels out and you end up with 7.5 grams. But notice that the question says round to the nearest tenth. Now 7.5 is already to the nearest tenth. But then the question also says do not include units. And so the answer is going to be 7.5. This question says, a total of 400 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid with specific gravity 1.16 is used to prepare 2,000 milliliters of a 10% weight by volume hydrochloric acid. What is the percentage strength weight by weight of concentrated hydrochloric acid? Round to the nearest hundred, do not include percent sign. So in this question, the goal is to calculate the concentration of the concentrated hydrochloric acid and the concentration is going to be expressed as a percentage weight by weight. Now you've been given the volume, which is 400 milliliters. You've been given specific gravity, which is 1.16. And you've been given the volume of your final solution after dilution, which is 2000 milliliters. And this concentration is 10% weight by volume. 
And so the way we want to solve this question is to use the algebraic equation to first determine the concentration of the concentrated hydrochloric acid in terms of percentage weight by volume. And then once we've determined that, we're going to convert that to percentage weight by weight. And so the simplified form of the algebraic equation we are going to be using is C1 Q1 is equal to C final Q final. Where C1 is the initial concentration, Q1 is the initial quantity, CF is your final concentration and QF is the final quantity. So in this question, the C1, which is your initial concentration, is what we're actually trying to determine. Q1, which is the initial quantity, is going to be 400. CF, which is the final concentration, is the 10% weight by volume. And then QF, which is the final quantity, is going to be your 2,000 milliliters. So we can go ahead and substitute all these values into the equation. And so what that will look like then is you have C1 times Q1. Now Q1 here is 400 milliliters. And that's going to be equal to CF, which is the 10% times QF, which is 2000 milliliters. So to find C1, we can simply divide both sides by 400 milliliters. So the milliliters will cancel out, the 400 cancels out. And so your C1 is going to be equal to 50%. Now, this 50% is actually weight by volume. Notice from the question, we want to determine percentage weight by weight. And so the way we do that is we need to convert the percentage weight by volume to percentage weight by weight. It's important to recall this important equation, and that is your percent weight by volume is equal to percent weight by weight times specific gravity. So what we can do is we can substitute this value wherever we see percentage weight by volume and wherever we see the specific gravity, we are going to put 1.16 there. And so that implies that you have 50 being equal to percent weight by weight times the specific gravity, which is 1.16. Now we can go ahead and solve for the percent weight by weight. So that would imply that your percent weight by weight is going to be equal to the 50 percent weight by volume divided by 1.16. And the question says round to the nearest hundred, do not include units. And so the answer is going to be equal to 43.10. This question says, how many grams of sodium chloride should be used in preparing 250 milliliters of a stock solution such that 50 milliliters diluted to 1000 milliliters will yield a 0.3% weight by volume normal saline solution for irrigation? Round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. So in this question, the ultimate goal is to come up with a solution which is 1000 milliliters in volume and has a concentration of 0.3% weight by volume. Now the way you're going to get that is to take 50 milliliters from a stock solution and the stock solution has a volume of 250 milliliters. And so the ultimate task here is to determine the amount of sodium chloride in grams that you need to prepare the stock solution. And so just to give a physical representation of what is happening, you have 250 milliliter volume stock solution here. So this volume is 250 milliliters and you're going to take from this volume 50 milliliters. And this 50 milliliters is going to contain some amount of sodium chloride in such a way that when you prepare your more diluted solution, which is a thousand milliliters, you end up with a concentration of 0.3% weight by volume. And so the strategy here is to first determine the amount of drug that will be present in the thousand milliliter solution. And that amount of drug will be coming from the 50 milliliters that you took from here. So once you determine that amount of sodium chloride, you can then set up a proportion to determine the amount that you need for the 250 milliliter volume. So let's see how that looks like. And so what that will look like then is for the amount of sodium chloride in a thousand milliliters, we are going to take the concentration, which is a 0.3%, and then we're going to take the volume as well. So 0.3% implies that you have 0.3 grams of sodium chloride in 100 milliliters of solution. And we have here a thousand milliliters, so we can multiply this by a thousand milliliters. And so here the milliliters will cancel out and that will give you units of grams and you end up with three grams of sodium chloride. So you have three grams of sodium chloride in this thousand milliliter solution. But it's important to notice that this three grams actually came from the 50 milliliter volume that you took from the stock solution. So here is where we get to set up a proportion to determine the amount that will be present in the 250 milliliter solution. So let's take a look at how we do that. 
and so to determine the amount of sodium chloride in the 250 milliliter solution we are going to take this three grams and set up a proportion using this 50 milliliter volumes and so this would imply that you have three grams of sodium chloride in the 50 milliliters and we want to determine the amount in grams of sodium chloride that is present in the 250 milliliter solution so we can go ahead and solve for the unknown which is x here now x is going to be equal to 3 grams times 250 milliliters divided by 50 milliliters now the milliliters cancels out this zero cancels out you have this five cancel out to give you five so you have three grams times five now the question says round and nearest whole number do not include units and so the answer here is going to be equal to 15. This question says, how many milliliters of 75% volume by volume alcohol and how much water should be used in compounding the following prescription? You have X cane 2 grams, alcohol 50%, 60 milliliters, and the 6 says ear drops. So in this question, the goal is to calculate the volume in milliliters of the 75% volume by volume alcohol and then also the volume in milliliters of water. Now, there are a number of ways you can approach this question, but the smartest way is to use the allegation method. And so what that will look like then is you start off with the allegation grid, which is two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. And in the top left corner, you're going to put the higher strength. In the bottom left corner, you're going to put the lower strength. And in the middle, you're going to put the desired strength or the desired concentration. So in this question, the higher strength is going to be 75%. So that goes to the top left. So you have 75% here. And the bottom left is going to be the water. The concentration of water is going to be zero because it has no alcohol in it. So you have zero down here. And in the middle is the desired concentration, which is 50%. So 50 goes in the middle. So what we need to do next on the right hand side of the grid is to determine the number of parts of the 75% volume by volume solution and the number of parts of water. And so the way it works is to determine the number of parts of the 75% volume by volume solution. We are going to take the desired concentration, which is the 50, subtract from it the lower concentration, which is 0. So 50 minus 0 is 50, and that goes in the top right. So you have 50 parts of the 75% volume by volume alcohol solution. Now, to determine the number of parts of water, you're going to take the higher strength, subtract from that the desired concentration, and then that will go to the bottom right. So you have 75 minus 50, that gives 25. So you have 25 parts of the water of 0%. And so the next thing that we need is the total parts because what you've been given in the question is the 60 milliliters and that actually represents the total volume you are making so we also need total parts now total parts is going to be equal to the 50 plus the 25 and that's going to be equal to 75 so this total parts which is 75 represents the 60 milliliter volume and so we can now proceed to determine the volume in milliliters of the 75 percent volume by volume alcohol solution and the way we do that is to take the number of parts that represents the 75 percent volume by volume alcohol which is 50 divided by the total parts and multiply that by the total quantity so that would imply that you have 50 divided by 75 times 60 milliliters and that's going to be equal to 40 milliliters. So now to determine the volume of water, what you can do is you can take the total volume which is 60 milliliters and subtract from that the volume that is needed for the 75% alcohol and that will give you the volume of water. So that implies that you have 60 milliliters minus 40 milliliters and that's going to be equal to 20 milliliters. This question says, how many milliliters of 65% weight by weight phosphoric acid having a specific gravity of 1.61 should be used in preparing one gallon of a quarter percent weight by volume phosphoric acid solution to be used for bladder irrigation? Round to the nearest whole number, do not include units. So in this question, the goal is to calculate the volume in milliliters of a 65% weight by weight phosphoric acid solution. And you've been given the specific gravity to be 1.61 i'll tell you in a little bit why you do need a specific gravity for this question and you desire to prepare a gallon of a quarter percent phosphoric acid solution so a real elegant way to solve this question is to use a simplified version of the algebraic equation and here the version of the equation i would like to use is the c1 q1 equals c final q final where your C1 is the initial concentration, Q1 is the initial quantity, 
CEF is the final concentration and QF is the final quantity. Now, in this question, it's important to know that you have two different concentrations, one of which is your final, the other is your initial. But the important thing that you want to take note of is for the final concentration is given as a quarter percent by its weight by volume and your initial concentration is given as weight by weight. So in order to ensure that we are in the same dimensions, we are going to go ahead and convert the percentage weight by weight to weight by volume. And the way we do that is to multiply the percentage weight by weight by the specific gravity. So we're going to go ahead and do that to determine what the initial concentration will be in terms of weight by volume. So whenever you want to convert percentage weight by weight to weight by volume, you use the equation percentage weight by volume is equal to percent weight by weight times the specific gravity. And so here, the percent weight by volume is going to be equal to 65% weight by weight times the specific gravity, which is 1.61. And that's going to be equal to 104.65% weight by volume. So at this point, we have all the information that we need to substitute into the equation. And for C1, we are going to put the 104.65% weight by volume. Q1 is the initial quantity which we are looking for. CF is going to be a quarter percent and then QF is going to be a gallon. Now, because we need the answer in milliliters, we are going to use the volume that is equivalent to one gallon in milliliters. And so from our conversion, one gallon is equal to 3785.4 milliliters. So we go ahead and substitute all these values into the equation. So C1 is going to be 104.65% times Q1, which is going to be equal to a quarter percent times the final quantity, which is one gallon, which is equivalent to 3785.4 milliliters. So what goes in the parentheses here is going to be 3785.4 milliliters. We go ahead and divide both sides by 104.65%. So the 104.65% cancels each other out. You're left with Q1. And now Q1 is going to be equal to 9.04 milliliters but notice that the question says round to the nearest whole number do not include units and so the answer is going to be equal to nine so i hope you found this video tutorial useful if you did be sure to like it and share it if you have any questions leave them in the comments and i'll get to them as soon as i see them if you like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations tips tricks and strategies then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything my job here is done but yours has just begun Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.